Hello everyone, thanks again for coming to check this out. So this is part two of our compound shape series. We're looking at this trapezoid shape here. And right now this is where we're heading, so I'm starting at the very end. We're going to be doing this. And you see we're getting right into the actual ribbon reproduction now as well. So it's going to come in as a square, do its morphing thing, then animate back the same way. And you see that with our length, we can adjust the length without that messing with the initial form of the square there. So this is the build that I settled on for the actual ribbon reproduction, but what we're going to do first is look at another build. Uh, because for beginners I'd like to show you as many ways as possible to get this shape done. Okay then, let's jump into a project and get started. The first topic is why we would want to use a compound shape for a trapezoid shape like this, because as you can see we can just convert a shape layer to uh, points and then adjust the control points to make a shape like this. So the answer to that question is all related to the fact that we want this shape layer to be practical to use in Final Cut. So we want it to have a width control and a height control. And when we convert to points, that presents us with some problems because we get distortion and skewing of the original shape form. So I'm talking about this. Uh, because we've converted to points, we don't have width and height geometry parameters. So we have the scale parameters to work with. And as you can see, when we adjust the scale, the form flattens out. And when we adjust on the X, it expands out. So that's what I mean by distortion and skewing. One way around that is to use the distortion tool instead. So with this shape here, I've used that tool to make the trapezoid shape instead, as you can see. And because we can do this without converting to points, we can have uh, width and height. So this will solve our problem for the width as you can see, but still not for height. And it's the same again with the general scale parameters. So what we need is a compound shape so that we can make this visible form uh, in a way that it can have length changes and height changes and keep this angle of the side so it can preserve its form as we change it in the final cut. So let's have a look at one way to do that. I'll show you uh, one method that we can use. It's not the method that I use to reproduce the ribbon animation, um, which we'll look at later. And the main reason for that is because in the ribbon reproduction, we need to have some roundness to the layers. Um, but this is a method I use a lot for work, and I'll show it to you now. So we've got this base shape here, and I have on the left this layer. You can see the anchor point is to the side. And on the right, I have this layer. You see the anchor point is to the side. So we are going to do the same link to edge method that we did in part one, but to the left and right sides instead. So let's grab the left, and I'll grab the X position, add a link, drag in the base as the source, and choose attributes edges left and then come to, I'm just going to name that edge, and then I'll drag that to the right, but change it to edges right. So 
so from here I'm going to add well I'll show you what not to do first so this is actually a, a question I get a lot through the channel um, so if we want to use these as a mask source now here's what not to do so if we apply an image mask directly to this layer and then attempt to use this layer see how it won't accept it because it's linked and I'm not sure exactly how it works with motion but if you have linked a property you cannot use then that layer as an image mask source to the parent layer so in that case what we do is we're going to group that base layer and now apply the mask to the group instead and then it will take the mask source. We're going to change that to subtract. I'm going to call this mask left, duplicate it, call this one right and drag in right for the source. From here let's grab the left mask source. I'll come to rotation and add minus 18 to get my angle and then in the link here in the edge link I'm going to dial it back to 32. In the right edge link I'm going to have that go the other way minus 32 and then for rotation I'm going to add a link behavior, add left as the source, I'll call it ZINV, inverted, and that tells me that I've added a value of minus 1 so that it works in the opposite direction. So let's turn off these mask layers. So now you see we've got our trapezoid shape, it's a compound shape, and for publishable parameters, so coming in here, we can give the X without distortion and we can give the Y without distortion. So what you see there, that tapering off, that's not a distortion, that's actually uh, keeping the true form uh, for the geometric shape. So by providing both the height control and the length control, the user can form any shape they like without skewing or distortion. So what we'll do now is have a look at, if you're going to use this method, how we could animate this to get the ribbon reproduction, uh, you know, the morphing going on. And then we'll have a look at the other method that I did use instead for the ribbon reproduction. Okay, so to get started, I've just converted the motion project to a Final Cut Titles template. And I've set it up exactly the same way we did in part one with the null controller. So if you're not sure about that, there's a link in the description to review all of that. So we'll just jump ahead and assume we've done that. Uh, so just a reminder then, it's the base animation is driven. You can see the X scale there is working. But that's through this link to this null here. And the animation, the keyframes are applied to the custom mix slider. Okay, I've got some frames either side here so that then we can go ahead and look at um, the actual ribbon animation. So it comes in as a square first, then it animates and comes back to the square before it animates out. Okay, so the first thing we want to do then is deal with these uneven sides and animate the, the morph into the secondary state. The first thing we're going to do then is animate the rotation of our mask layers. So it starts at 18. So we've left it there and that's why it is cropping out to give us those uneven sides. Uh, so okay, we want to line things up with the slider keyframes here. So from 20 to 110, about 1 to 
three frames in. We're going to set this rotation at zero. And remember, we linked the rotation to the other side, so the other side is going to follow along. We'll set a keyframe there, and right here, we'll set another keyframe and set that to its original. Just finesse this. Okay, so for the next 10 frames when the layer comes back, and again here in the null, it's shifting back from 1 in the mix, just back to 0.9. So from here to here, for the rotation, that's going to come back to positive 18. And we want that lined up with the finesse of the slider keyframe, so that's on the third. So that it all happens in tune with each other. So there we get the even sides animating out and it's going to swing back in. Okay, so let's reverse that out now. We want to be right about here. Just going to grab all these, copy and paste the keyframes and reverse them. One, two, three. Sorry, this is the boring part. And on this side, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, no. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. There to there. Let's see that. Okay, that looks all right. So what we have to do now is review how we publish parameters uh, for height. So remember from part one, running it through a null means that we can animate on the X parameter but still have a publishable length. And that works fine. But with height, with this build, we're going to run into trouble because it's going to run out of clipping mask there. So what we can do for that is animate the edge offsets to pull in a bit closer and then we can put the height onto a slider to give it a maximum height. So I'm going to grab this right edge and grab the offset and add a link and drag in left as the source and here the thing we want is Behaviors, Edge, Edge Offset, and give that a minus one for scale so that it works in the opposite direction. Then from here, so I have a keyframe applied ready to go. Right there at this point, we are going to, so yeah, at this frame we want to add a keyframe, 
and then for the next 10 frames we're going to double that so that it pulls in closer. And then on the way out as well, set another keyframe and we'll bring that back to 32. Sorry, this is the boring part again. Right, so now that we've pulled them in closer, then with the, with the height, it's just the Y scale, the natural Y scale that's being published. So, starts running out of mask right about there now. So what's that? Is that right on 150? Let's have a look at 148. Okay, so at 148, what we're going to do then is unpublish this. And we're going to go add to rig, new rig, new slider. We'll call this height. And then at zero, of course, it's going to be zero. Then at 100. 148 and we're going to publish that so if all we want is just the trapezoid shape we're not going to worry about the square at the moment if we want to use this build then putting the height onto a slider solves that it all depends on what you want to do with your template. Um, I think, personally, if I was working on a project like this, because I know we're going to have uh, an on-screen control in the project that would work on a master group, we would be able to scale it that way. And I think between a master scale and just the length parameter, then that's going to be all right. So we can probably get rid of height altogether. Okay, so for this build, we've looked at animating a shape like this, which would be useful for a title banner, a title graphic, um, lots of uses for it. What we want to do now is look at the full ribbon reproduction style. So it comes in as a square and animates. Okay, so we want the scale of the shape to come in uh, at a state that it makes a square. So something like this. So these frames are set aside for the animation in. At about 0.29, that will give us the square that we want to have scale in and rotate first and then do the animation. Uh, that square might be a bit off. I've got this little layer here to tell us. Okay, I think we've left the height right, so let's get rid of this. And we can get rid of this as well. We'll look at height again, but we don't need to publish it. So it'll come in as a square. So in a higher group, so we might group this group and then have it scale and rotate in. But the scale is coming, the, the dimensions of this layer are coming through the null. And the null is published. And still, we can't then animate the null because that needs to be constant. 
And the trouble is that if we do use our length control, then you see the square will come in wider. So we need another solution, and it's similar to what we did in part one. So we're going to have a secondary null to set another value, and it will give control over to the main null, and then give it back at the end. So let's have a look at that. All right, as you can see, I've done a few things here. And what we have is in the null section now, we have a null in and a null out. In the base, we have new links. We've got a null in link here. And that runs right to frame uh, one second, 10 frames, right to the end of the first animation out, but finishes before the morph back and starts again on the other side. So like we learned in part one, we can have multiple links and then links can hand control over to the next one. The null in and the null out, as you can see, are set to 29%. So when the group animates in here, so this is the group that is animating in with rotation and scale. And when it comes in, it's under the control of the null in link here. And then from here to here, the null in. Now the null in doesn't have any uh, mixed slider at all. But what's happening is because null drive is on the top right, you see null drive is running from zero. And so at zero, it has no control. But from here to here, as it runs from 0 to 1, it takes control over from null in. And it has to run until the end of the animation because if we trim null in to here, you'll see it glitch. And then on the way out, it's just doing the same thing. So null out is set to the same 29 scale. And as far as I can see, this works fine. And what we have now is that if we come to the length, that square dimension is preserved. So we can do this. I think it's practical for a title template. And coming back to height, though, this is where height uh, we really can't go any further with height. There is no real practical solution, I think, because we have height, and this is working with those uh, end offsets animated as well to give it more space. But we're trumped here. There's really no solution for it. Well, there is. Uh, the solution would be to have another null that would have it constrained on the height as well. But what you will have then is it will come in and the whole thing will grow. It will scale up to match that dimension and that's ugly, I think. Okay, so that's as far as we'll go with this particular build. Um, so I have another one to show you as well, which is the one I settled on for the ribbon. Uh, I hope that this one's been useful for you because like we're saying, if it's not for the square having to animate in uh, just as a trapezoid shape, if you're not interested in having roundness, this is very functional and useful for a Final Cut title. Right, so here is the build that I settled on for the ribbon animation. So we're starting again with the base layer. This is 800 by 200. So it's still rigged up to the nulls, and null in and null out are now at 25%. So it was at 900 width before, so it was 29% to make the square. Now it's 800 width, and it's at 25%. So it's going to animate in, and then you can see this happening, and that's going to animate back out the same way, back to the square and out again. So in the base shape then, you see I'm animating the X shear parameter. 
and that's running from 0 to 18, then to negative 18. And the null drive, the null link, the main one, is coming back to 0.7. So from 1 to 0.7, and then back out the other way. So that gives us the left side. So I've called that left wing, and there's a mask on that group, not on the base layer, but on the group. So the mask will clip it out at the middle. So then what we want to do is duplicate that. We could use a clone to do it. I prefer really just to duplicate and link. I'll call that base right. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck preserve scale in the roundness section for both of them. And I'm going to take base right's roundness and link that to base left. And I'm also going to link the Y scale as well. Because with this build, actually I'll just go a step further here. So we've got this duplicate here that's linked and either in rotation Y or in the X scale of that duplicate group, minus 100 on the scale. So now we have the full trapezoid shape. Okay. Yeah, so with roundness, with roundness now, we can do that. You can, you can provide that now as a published parameter. And with the height, okay, so the height we have published, coming from here, just the Y scale. And if we're not thinking about having it animate in as a square, if you just want the trapezoid shape animation, then you see now with height we don't run out of clipping space at all. And we have, just for beginners, we've got preserve scale unchecked because if we do add roundness, see this side is this side is unchecked and this side is checked on. So this preserve scale, if it's left on and you do adjust the size by using scale, you'll see how the corners flatten out. So we leave it unchecked to keep uh, nice smooth round corners. Okay, so there is Let's get rid of that height. There's the build that I settled on for the ribbon reproduction, another way to do a trapezoid animation. And yeah, so we talked about it in the beginning. The reason we want to use a compound shape is so that we can provide parameters to the user uh, in the template without the shape skewing and distorting. Okay, thank you very much for joining us here, and I hope that you found something useful in this. All right, thank you for watching.